Okay, next on June 24th at 10.11 p.m., I note that at 10.07 the TV glitched during Dateline. Um, then at 10.11 during a Comcast business commercial, there was a flash of the NBC rainbow. So the glitch, I think, is something that's done just by a directed energy shot that makes a TV glitch at a certain point. It causes you to pay attention all of a sudden, you know, piques your attention. Um, and then the flash of the NBC rainbow. So I don't know what this means, right? I hope I write. I hope that it's not about retaliation being carried out against me or Chris or Brooke. Um, and I'll, then it makes me remember that I got dive bombed by a spy plane earlier in the day, or it flew really low. I don't know if dive bombed is the right word. It flew really low over me. Then. The next dream that I report is at 1.45 a.m. And I looks like I write the word contract and then the words, I it's either M-E-N-E -E or M-E-N-S-E, -E, which now men, mens, mensi. So, you know, um, I think this relates to a woman's period or something like that. That's what I think it relates to. Then I see it 11, that says 145. It must be wrong because this next one is 1126. It must have been 1045. At 1126, I see a flash of a roll of bills. At 1220, Infinity Warehouse. Government trying to keep me there. Convince me it's okay. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's not okay. It hasn't been okay. It never was okay. But I can tell that my parents and a lot of people around me have tried to convince this, me this is okay. It's absolutely not okay. Then I get the name Don Cornelius, the MC for Soul Train, another medical assassination. Actually, he committed suicide, but he was... Um, medically tortured, I think, with implants. My times are all over the place. This must not, this must be like 148 or something. Part of what goes on is I'm look, trying to look at the clock without glasses, and I don't know why I obsessively write the times down. I guess I kind of want to know how much space there is between each dream. I mean, I appreciate having the times written down, but <laughs> like in this case, a lot of them are wrong. Um, important. It's run by the government. And then it looks like I wrote something. It's, it looks like I wrote red voice. Like I think I mean red from that 70s show. It is a syrup slave. That's what I think it says. It is a syrup slave. So important, it's run by the government. And then the voice of Red from that 70s show, it is a syrup slave. Then I write down David Largent and Crandall are part of this. Um, David Largent has come to me many times in dreams. And there is there is a weird incident with David Largent related to the death of, I always forget his name. It's Andy Kaufman. I have the most incredible block around Andy Kaufman, Kaufman's name. And maybe that's partly why Don Cornelius came up, because Don Cornelius is another person whose name tends to get blocked out for me. Why would these people's names get blocked out? I mean, some stuff gets blocked out of my brain. My mother's birthday gets blocked out of my brain. Just bizarre things get blocked out of my brain. And does it have to do with the name, just the sound of the name itself, the idea that there's the word corn in it? Um, Andy Kaufman, you know, the name Andy, being linked to these, you know, these three Andrews that were in my life. And then Kaufman means, Kauf means to buy. So Andy, to buy a man. Maybe that's why Andy Kaufman gets blocked out of my name, my brain. Um, 
Andy Kaufman died of lung cancer and never smoked a cigarette. In his 30s, he died of lung cancer. So, um, he is linked in my mind with Dave Largent because when I was a kid, you know, they set me up and had me watch this taxi marathon at Dave Largent's house, and I had never seen taxi before. Anyway, and then Crandall, George Crandall, has showed up in dreams while I was in Minneapolis that always suggest that somebody's involved. He may have been one of the people that linked me up with that family in Germany as well. He's since passed on. Lean is part of this opioid syrup. So maybe that's why this says syrup slave. This is how Kurt Cobain started using opioids, according to biographies that I've read of him. And this is stuff that actually has showed up, I think, in my dreams. There's stuff that, you know, in retrospect, looks like cough syrup, this red, thick liquid that people are drinking or using. Singing, reporting the setups, all part of this. Spiral motif on sleeves, I see it like this. And so there's the spiral motif again, but it's separate. It's different than the other version. It's actually reversed the other version. I'll show you the other version that I had written down. So it's upside down the other direction. Also, I'm drawing it more rounded here. But the other thing, the, maybe possibly the reason why this is like this is because I had seen that picture of the, looked like a uh, like an S shape with blue around the edges, and then I saw the driveway just about a block away with the edges done in red, and it's, but it was like a reverse of the curve that I drew. And I was kind of, I, you know, that kind of made me doubt it for a minute, but it was also reverse colors too, because in the dream it was blue on the edges and that actual driveway was red on the edges. I don't know. Then there's the idea of a banana or a banana split. And then there's a dream. I'm out somewhere with Brooke, like on the run, homeless, maybe both. Carrying Brooke around, she is asleep on my shoulder. I find some kind of organization that is supposed to help people like us. I find some kind of clothes. I ask about long-term help. They ask me how old she is. I think at first she is about eight years old. Then I count back. I realize she was born in 1995 and she is an adult. The song in my head is Lukenbach, Texas. I have a feeling that this last dream you know when it said I think she's eight years old it makes me wonder since eight is the number of vision it makes me wonder if she's starting to see what's going on I don't know but this is this propaganda that they're trying to shove down my throat that you know Brooke is a consenting adult she is not consenting to this I not, if I'm not consenting to this, she's not consenting to this. And to the extent, you know, you might think that she is, I, you know, you can't consent to something that hasn't been fully disclosed. You just can't, whether you're an adult or a child. This is, a, as I said earlier today, a red herring. And the FBI tried to pull this one on me, too, when I reported this crime to the FBI. Um, they didn't seem to care that this has happened to us since we were both children, as if the fact that we were exploited as children didn't matter. The fact that we're still being exploited as adults doesn't matter. The fact that people are dying, dropping dead around us doesn't matter. The fact that there's murder plots, you know, there's probably contracts out on both. In fact, that that's probably why that word contract appeared here with a flash of a roll of bills. There's contracts out on our lives. We're just supposed to live like this and maybe try not to get killed. It's a freaking insane.
government trying to convince me it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Not okay. You know, reporting the setups, but what good does it do? Nobody's being held accountable. So, um, and she's under mind control. I mean, direct frequency based mind control, also not okay. So, I think the reason why Luckenbach, I was totally triggered by the end of this. Um, I think the reason why Luckenbach, Texas is the song that comes up here is because this is just basically telling me where this BS is coming from. This is not, it's not okay. This is not, my daughter's not a consenting adult. She's not consenting to be trafficked. She's not consenting to having contract put out on her life. She's not, she never consented to being trafficked as a child. She's being defrauded. She's being manipulated. She's being medically abused. She's being harmed daily. And so am I, and so is Chris. So, um... These people's voices that are saying this BS, they need to stop being listened to. And um, they have an outsized influence. To You know, it's just ridiculous how much influence these people have. They need to be taken down, you know, out of, out of influence. They, at the very least, they need to stop being listened to, you know, and their, um, you know, deceptions, manipulations, lies. need to not be given any um, airtime. They have too much power. And I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to do that. I mean, this is just so corrupt. It's just not even, like, it's not even funny. It's not even close to funny. It's so corrupt. So, you know, if, if it requires people being dragged off, you know, maybe we just need to do like a little overhaul on our prisons and fill them up with a bunch of white assholes and release all the, you know, the black low level offenders that are in there right now and fill it up with these people. Because I'm not really a big fan of the whole prison system, but if we're going to use it, we need to use it on the people that invented it. I don't know what to say. I just, you know, how are these people even given a voice? That's my question. How are these people even given a voice? Is it because they have gas and oil money? They need to be stopped, whatever it takes. And maybe